Okay, so let's begin the class. So first of all, we can just review briefly. There was a question we were discussing at the end of the last class. So the question we were discussing was about the current count. We were talking about this current solution that wouldn't work. So discuss with your partner. We have, well, we have the current count deficit. It's very big. We want to make it smaller. So why does this not work? Currency depreciation or protectionism. Donald Trump suggests protectionism. Okay, uh, some in the so other people, economists suggest the U.S. depreciate their currency. So why is that not going to work? Discuss with your partner. The first one, currency depreciation. Why would that not work? The practical example of the US and Japan it didn't work because they had different industries, right? Uh, any other reason? It's another reason. So we have different we are competing on different industries, that's one reason. Another reason. The J curve effect. Do you can you explain the J curve effect? Yeah. What is the J curve effect when we depreciate our currency? Can you explain? I think he can explain. Yes. Lady first. She's not sure. She wants you to explain. J curve effect means it is the long time. Yes. What happens in the short term? Short term is more minus. More than what we picked. The, the deficit gets worse. Why? Because uh, depreciation. Yeah, why? What does that cause? Why does the deficit get worse? Here it is. Initially, 
our trade balance gets worse. We get more imports, less export. So why? Because we have is our monetary system so tight, so for fear that we decrease the income love there. So if we our currency gets uh, cheaper, imports will get more expensive, right? Yeah. So we're actually, if we were buying the same amount of imports, we're actually spending more on imports. Okay, and the same our income. If our currency gets weaker, and we uh, we can also get uh, less as uh, exports. So initially, the trade balance can get worse. Then it takes time to improve. Okay. So why doesn't protectionism work? Uh, Moon J1. So Donald Trump suggests that the US should put a tariff on Chinese goods to save American jobs. Do you agree with Donald Trump? That will save American jobs? Do you know who Donald Trump is? He's running for election for the president next time, right? In the Republican Party in the US. He's a famous TV personality. I don't think he will win, but frankly he's leading in the poll, right? But he has this idea, let's put a tariff on Chinese goods. To save American jobs. Because then the Chinese products will be more expensive, okay, compared to the American one. Do you understand tariff? Yes. The tax, right? So that's protectionism. Do you think that will work? Do you agree with Donald Trump or not? No. no. Moon Ye Won. Do you think that's a good idea for the US to put the tax on Chinese goods? Are not a good idea for the US. Yes, it's a good idea, or no, it's not a good idea? It's not a good idea. Why not? So you should already have discussed this with your partner, right? Then the idea is when I ask you the question, you're ready to tell me the answer, okay? Because you already discussed with your partner. Did you find the answer with your partner? No, okay, then I'll ask somebody else. So, uh, you and Sun? Where is Liu and Sun? Yes. You didn't. Do you know the answer? <coughs> e on G? <coughs> so why is it a bad idea, protectionism? China industry. So, US industry is not. China industry, China industry is the low cost and low labor cost and mm. low pro, low quality. But U.S. company is air, made airplane, MRI, MRI. Yeah, so that's for the currency depreciation. Currency depreciation won't work, right? You think the same idea for protectionism? That anyway, the U.S. don't make those products, so China it won't work well, right? That's a good point. Yes. Any other reason? China will prevent us coming to the embassy. China will respond, right? That's the main problem. We can have escalation. Do you understand escalation? Yes. Do you ever have a fight and it escalates? <laughs> hmm? Starts with some small thing and then gets worse? Yeah. Hmm? Yes? Sometimes if people are drunk, somebody says insults somebody else, right? 
It's a very small one, and then they reply, and then in the end they're fighting, escalating. So the same thing can happen with trade. So protectionism is the opposite of the free trade agreement. Okay? So free trade agreement is usually good because we already explained about trade. It's a very simple way. England makes cheese and Portugal makes wine. It's better if we can buy the English cheese in Portugal and drink the Portuguese wine in England. Okay? England are better at making cheese. Portugal are better at making wine. Okay? So the tariff for quota is not going to have that and it's going to be a bad result. It will reduce both exports and imports. Okay. So, one solution here is to say, get the Americans, encourage US people to save more, or encourage Chinese people to spend more, or Japanese people to spend more. Okay. Currently, the Chinese government is trying to encourage Chinese people to spend more money. You guys are from China. Do you like spending money or saving money? Saving money. Saving money? Why? Why do you like saving money? <coughs> do you like going out and buying things? Going shopping? Come home with some bags, very happy? No? Not really? Okay. Well, different, a little bit of a cultural difference as well, right? Do you guys like spending money? Chinese students? You like spending money? Is it culture changing in China? Do the younger people spend more money than the older generation? Yes. Yes? Do your parents complain about you spending too much money? <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, they're trying to change a little bit in China, getting people to consume more. Okay, so then we are going to look at this article that we said we'd look at in this class. So if you read this article before the class, it could be a help. So this is on the week four of the reading. The article is called The Domino Effect from The Economist. We're not going to read all of it, but I'm going to show you also we're going to learn how to read in English this kind of article. You don't have to read everything, right? So we can read the headline. The headline, when you write in English, you should also have a headline. Or if you do a presentation, you should have one sentence which sums up what you want to communicate to the audience. Okay? What should, what, what should you do if you can't sum up in one sentence your idea? If it takes you four or five sentences to say your idea, what should you do? Then people are not, if it takes you five sentences to sum up your idea to the audience, people, are people going to understand what you want to say? No, they're not, right? So you have to stop your presentation and go back to the start again and say, can I sum up in one sentence to make clear what I want to communicate? Okay? Otherwise, it's not clear in your head. If it's not clear in your head, it's not going to be clear in the audience's head. It's the same for writing. Okay? So the first sentence sums up what the idea they want to communicate here. That's the way, in The Economist, they actually make a different way, right? They actually make a sentence at the start, unlike other newspaper articles, to make it even clearer. So it says here, many currencies that are backed by a current account deficit are now falling just as the dollar has. So currencies with a current account deficit are falling. Okay, so we're going to read about that. Okay, do you understand what does falling mean? Getting weaker or getting stronger? Getting weaker, right? So the currencies with the current account deficit are getting weaker. So according to the economic textbooks, the currencies of economies with large current account deficits should depreciate relative to those of countries with surpluses, right? This will stimulate exports and curve. Do you understand curve? What does curve mean? Control or stop imports, slow down helping to slim or make the trade gap lower, right? As we saw, America has the world's biggest current account deficit and the dollar has been getting weaker since 2002. Okay? Oddly, however, the currencies of many other countries which large deficits have enjoyed big gains until recently. Now at last, currency markets have started to see sense. 
So we read the first sentence under the introduction. Okay? In the introduction, we can see this idea that I can write here. Okay? It's like a balancing act. Okay? Do, do, do you ever play the seesaw with your friends? Yes. Yeah. Do you like that? In Korea, you have something for jumping? On. <laughs> what? What's that? So, things are not balanced at the moment. Okay, the US has a deficit in their current account, right? And another current country has a surplus, China, right? US. So how can we make this balance, right? So the idea is that over the long term, if the US has a weaker currency and China has a stronger currency, right? Over the long term, this should balance down, okay? US has the weaker currency, then what happens? Exports are stimulated, okay? Imports are reduced, okay? Over the longer term, and then this becomes a balance. For China, their currency gets stronger, okay? So, what happens? Their export to is based down and their import is... Yes. So let's have a look then. What is that the trend for the China, for the U.S. dollar and the Chinese currency, right? So if we write in here the dollar and RMB ten years, right? We can see uh, <coughs> the way the currency has been moving over the last ten years, right? So this is the last ten years of the Chinese currency and the U.S. currency. Chinese currency in 2006 was 8 for 1 US dollar, right? And then China has managed flow, so slowly, slowly, slowly it's getting stronger against the dollar, okay? Over time. So this should balance over time, right? So that's the theory. Do you understand that theory? China's currency is undervalued against the dollar. Rice is cheaper in China, right? Haircuts are cheaper, hotels are cheaper. So over time to get it balanced, the Chinese currency should get slowly stronger and the US dollar should get slowly weaker. Okay? Because the Chinese currency, if the Chinese currency is undervalued. So <coughs> it's, this has been happening, but it hasn't been happening for some countries. And then we can see just recently China weakened their currency here. Right, that was in the news because of their problem, economic problems in the stock market. Right? Today, the US decided they were thinking about raising the interest rates. They didn't raise the interest rate. Okay? So, if they don't raise the interest rate in the US, if they raise the interest rate, is the US dollar going to get stronger or weaker? If the, if the US raises the interest rate, will the US dollar get stronger or weaker in the short term? Is that going to affect demand for the dollar? More demand for the dollar or less demand for the dollar? Hmm? More demand, right? If I increase the interest rate on the dollar, more people want to buy the dollar because they get higher interest. It's like the bank offers you interest. I want to put my money where I can get higher interest. Okay. So anyway, the US didn't raise the interest rate, but they expect they might do later. So that's the first. Then we go and read the conclusion. That's our next step. So the longer that international investors remain risk averse, do you understand risk averse? Risk off. Does that mean we like risk or we don't like risk? Don't like risk. Okay, the more attention they are likely to pay to current account imbalances. A few currencies seem to have been overlooked. Those of Australia, Poland, and Hungary have held up surprisingly well. What does it mean to hold up? Stay strong or get weaker? Hold up, hold up something. You're still strong, right? Don't drop it. So we can see the US currency has been getting weaker. But Australia, let's just take the first one for example. Australia, despite a big deficit, current account deficit, Australia has not been getting weaker, right? So he, they think all of them look overvalued. They could be the next domino to fall. Do you understand domino? Yeah. So the Australian currency could get weaker. 
because they think it's overvalued. Okay? Do you understand overvalued? Yes. What does overvalued mean? The easiest way to think of that is if you go on holidays to Australia, is it going to be expensive or cheap? Expensive. Expensive, right? The Australian currency is very expensive for you to buy. It's overvalued. Okay? When you go to the bank, you need to buy, you don't get many Australian dollars for your Korean one. Okay? I went to Australia a couple of years ago, it was very expensive. So now we've read the introduction and the conclusion, we get an idea about what this article is about. Right? I can tell it's about the fact that normally a current country has the current account deficit, its currency should get weaker over the long term. Okay? But it doesn't always work in real life. For example, Australia. Okay? So I get the idea. Right? So now we can go in and read the first sentence on each paragraph. So when you're writing in English, when I was a kid, in, even in primary school, I learned a way to write in English, which was maybe you, when you were studying English, you had a writing teacher, right? They would tell you you have to write about your idea and then make brainstorming, make different ideas. Each idea is a paragraph, right? The first sentence of each paragraph is the subject sentence. And then the other three or four sentences is supporting sentence. So it's a different style than your language. Okay? In Russian, do you write like that too? Like you write like Koreans. Okay? So in English, it's different. If I put the subject sentence in the middle, my elementary school teacher, X, right? Wrong. So from a young age, English speakers learn to write and read like that. So if you write in an other way in English, it doesn't go into their brain. They learn from elementary school. When they're reading, they're going to read the subject sentence and supporting sentences. Okay? So you should write like that in English. So here we have Britain, Australia, New Zealand and Iceland all have large current account deficits. So we looked at the graph in the last class, which country has deficits, which country has surplus, right? We saw the US, Britain, Australia. Okay, they all have deficits. New Zealand. Okay, yet over several years, until mid 2007, their currencies perversely, perversely means wrongly or strangely, rose, got stronger relative to the economies like Japan and Switzerland. Okay, so let's look at the next paragraph. This paradox is the result of the carry trade, a popular currency strategy that explains why trade flows are now dwarfed by cross-border capital flows. So, we're going to explain a little bit about carry trade. Somebody who studies the financial management class studied about that so they can help us, right? But what this means is that speculators, do you understand speculators? Speculators and investors, right? Just trading money for profit, okay? They are Dwarfing. What does it mean to dwarf something? It's a strange word. Smaller. Make the other thing smaller. Make the other thing look like a dwarf. So here are the speculators, and here are the companies, exporting and importing companies, right? So exporting and importing companies look like a dwarf compared to the speculators. It means that the speculators are used trading more money than the exporting and importing companies, right? and having a bigger effect on the currency markets, okay, or investors. So we call this cross-border capital flows, okay. So in a world of low interest rates, investors piled into currencies that offered higher interest rates. So Britain, Australia, and New Zealand offered high interest rate. So investors got a loan in a low interest rate currency from Japan and deposited in the high interest rate currency, right? So who is studying international financial management also here? So can you guys explain the carry trade to the other students? Who wants to explain the carry trade? Yes, you can try to explain. What is the carry trade? Uh, so in different countries, there can be different interest rates. For yes. example, in Japan, it may be near zero. Right. Uh, however, in Australia, it can be near 4%. Okay, Japan, Australia, 4%. So it seems logical that we get uh, a credit, uh, a loan, a loan in Japan, in the uh, 
if the interest there is so small. And replace place our money to the economy of Australia. We're on time deposit. Thanks for your money. Put your money there. Right? Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. If Chinan Bank is going to give you a loan at 0% and you can deposit the money in HANA Bank for 4%, what are you going to do? Hmm? Get a loan from HANA Bank and put in Chinan Bank? That's the normal situation, right? But if you had the other situation, you get everybody would get the loan at 4%, 0% and deposit at 4%. So why doesn't everybody do this? What's the risk? Inflation. What could happen? Because I have to change my money. I need my money in Japanese yen later to pay for my things, right? So I change my money from yen to Australian dollars. What's the risk? When I change my money back from dollars to yen, what's the risk? Yes, this currency could depreciate. Okay? And the reason this one has higher interest rate is it has higher inflation. Okay? Japan has low inflation, Australia has high inflation. So we expect that this should depreciate. But because so many people are doing the carry trade, they are selling the Japanese yen. Is that going to make the yen weaker or stronger? Weaker. weaker. They are buying the dollar. Is that going to make the dollar weaker or stronger? stronger? So so many people are doing this kind of trade. right? That is why these cur even though the countries have a current account deficit, their currency should get weaker, like the US, but it's not, okay? Because of this kind of carry trade. Okay. So, <coughs> this, uh, this article is from 2008, during the crisis, right? So it says here, but since the eruption of global financial turmoil last year, the dwindling appetite for risk does that mean people want risk or don't want risk? Okay, my appetite is getting lower. Okay, carry trades have started to unwind because this is kind of risky. So in the risk-off environment, people don't want to do the carry trade. So people are stopped doing the carry trade. Okay, as a result, the current account imbalances are again having a powerful influence over currencies. Okay, so we can see that on a basic level, or maybe 50 years ago or 70 years ago. Current account imbalance had a strong influence on currencies, okay? Or in the risk-off situation, the current account imbalance has a strong influence on currencies. The easy situation we looked at, where the bicycle company from the US buys bicycle from the UK, okay? So they have to use British pounds, they sell their dollars and buy pounds, making the US dollar weaker and the pound stronger, right? So that is the trade effect on the currencies. Right? So that works well on the risk off situation, but not when we have the carry trade. So they're proving this chart here. It shows that in this year, the year of the crisis, the weakest currencies have been the currencies with deficits, Britain to South Africa. Okay? So that's the normal situation. The weaker currency, the currency getting weaker is the country with deficit. Okay? The current currency which has the surplus is getting stronger the yen and the Swiss franc, but it would have been opposite a year ago. So we can see that this is uh, current account balances and changes in exchange rates. So here we have the exchange rate, here is plus and here is minus, and here we have current account balance, here is plus and minus, okay? So this is the relationship we should expect. Our exchange rate is going to get stronger, Japan and Switzerland, if we have surplus. Okay? So surplus country, our exchange rate is going to get stronger to balance out. Okay? So surplus countries, Japan, Switzerland, Thailand, China, okay? Malaysia, they were all, in this 2008, their currency was all getting stronger. What about here? Uh, Australia getting weaker, or Australia was the exception, US getting weaker, New Zealand, Turkey, South Africa, Iceland. We can see South Korea in 2008 had a small deficit okay. and got uh, slightly weaker. So we should be able to draw a line like this when it's a risk off. Risk off. Investors are risk off. Okay. So can you understand the speculators? They are getting involved in the market and making strange things happen. Okay. That don't normally happen. 
So, increased concern about currency account deficits is also causing investors to discriminate more between emerging markets. Okay? Do you understand emerging markets? Yes. So, a popular argument has been that developing economies are less risky because they are no longer dependent on foreign capital. So a lot of them have current account surpluses. But here they say, half of the 25 biggest emerging economies now have deficits. So some, traditionally people thought that they have surpluses, but now they're starting to get some deficits too. They gave the example of South Korea just that year, Brazil, India. India also had a deficit that year. Okay. So, uh, the nature of capital inflows, financing and deficit also matter, matters. Foreign direct investment is less volatile than speculative capital inflows. Okay, so, do you understand FDI? Yes. FDI is investing in a factory or land. If I buy a factory or land, am I going to take my money out suddenly? No, right? But if I'm doing this kind of trade, can I take my money out suddenly? No. This one? If I want, yes, no problem, right? I buy the Australian bond, I can sell it tomorrow. Okay, I buy a factory, can I sell the factory tomorrow? No. Well, I might lose a lot of money. Bonds are very liquid, so I buy today, I sell tomorrow, the price doesn't change much, right? Factory will change. So, uh, <coughs> they make that point here. Next paragraph. Central banks in developing worlds, emerging economies, are worried that falling currencies will make worse inflation. Okay, so uh, the longer that international investors remain risk averse, the more attention they pay to current account imbalances. So this is one of the main points of this article. Okay, if investors are risk averse, then the current account imbalance has effect on the currency market. Okay, so uh, that, that is again into our conclusion. So do you have any question about this, this article? So discuss with your partner. What are the two things, in this article they give two main things which affect the currency market, right? Do you understand the effect of the currency market? affect the price of the currency, whether it gets stronger or weaker, okay? So discuss with your partner. What are the two things which this article says affected the currency market? Two important things.
Okay. So in this case, we're going to use Australia and Japan, right? So we have, according to this article, we have two influ two main influences. There are many things with it which influence the exchange rate. We'll talk about later, but they're looking at just two here, right? So Trey uh, saw young. Yes. What are the two things? which influence the exchange rate they're talking about here. Trey uh, Taimin, not here. Yan uh, Yan Sok. Yes, what are the two things? They said one thing dwarfs the other thing. But what are the two things they are talking about? You don't know? If you don't know, just say I don't know, it's okay. Uh, EJ Gong? Yes, what are the two things they are talking about? E.G. Sue? <coughs> Where is E.G. Sue? Not here. E. Chang He? Yes? Can you trade the word? Can you trade and not like FDI? What were we talking about in the class the last night? What was the subject of the last class? Yes, yeah, so carry trade and carry trade and current account. Okay, so next question, discuss with your partner. How does the current account affect the exchange rate? How does the carry trade affect the exchange rate? Okay. So these are the two things. Number one, current account. You can look up here, right? Number two, the carry trade. So how do they affect the exchange rate? They, does current account deficit equals getting stronger, current account surplus getting weaker, right? What is the relationship? Okay? So discuss with your partner. How does the current trade and how does the current account affect the exchange rate? Hey, uh, 
halfway moon? Where is halfway moon? Okay. How does the first one, how does the current account, how does the current account affect the exchange rate? Finish the sentence. A currency, a country with a currency account surplus, currency will get weaker or stronger. Stronger. A country with a current account deficit, currency will get why? Okay, look. You can look up here on the board. Current account, we're talking about exports and imports. Okay, does anybody know why? Can anybody tell me why? Why does a surplus country like Japan, we expect the currency will get stronger? And deficit country like Australia, we expect it will get weaker. Why? Japan government made a currency weaker in in, in nature. So we, we, we say that Japan's currency is undervalued against the Australian currency, right? That's one reason why they're able to export more things. Things are cheaper in their country, okay? So they can export. Australia, things are expensive in their country, right? So they buy the things from Japan, okay? So what should happen eventually? If I'm buying things from Japan, is the Japan, do I, it's like the American company buying from the, British company, right? So eventually, we want to make a balance. So the answer is basically to make things balanced, right? To make a balance in international trade. Okay? We could continue in this situation, but if we want to make a balance, we need we are we are going to look at this currency getting weaker. Australia's exports will go up, right? Imports will go down. This currency getting stronger gradually. The exports should go down and imports go up. Okay, and we should have a balanced situation. So that's the theory, right? Yes. So, what about the second one, the carry trade? So, uh, Astavich. Astavich. Kesenia. If the speculators or uh, other people want to uh, get loan from the currency, from the weaker currency, and uh, uh, deposit? Yes, deposit to the uh, countries with the stronger currency, uh, it will uh, make um, the strong uh, currency to get more stronger. Yes. And uh, the weaker currency to get longer. Okay. Um, that's how it. Uh... So we can see it's the opposite effect here, right? In number one, the Australian currency is overvalued, so it should get weaker. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Yes. Yeah. My currency is overvalued, I expect it to get weaker. If we look at tourism, it's a very simple way. Australia is very expensive, Japan is very cheap. Where are people going to go on holidays? Japan. Okay, so are people going to buy the Japanese currency? Yes. Yes, what will happen? Japan currency is going stronger. Getting stronger, right? So everybody's going to go on holidays to Japan, buy the Japanese currency, it will get stronger, it should balance out, okay? Then maybe Japan will be here, overvalued, and Australia will be cheaper. Then everybody goes on holidays to Australia, buys the Australian dollar, the Australian dollar gets stronger. Okay, so this is like balancing things out. Okay? But this is one has the opposite effect. We can see here in this case, Japan is the one which is the undervalued currency surplus. Here it's getting stronger. That's normal, right? But this one is making it weaker. Because people are selling the yen, getting a loan of the yen and selling the yen. So it has the opposite effect. Okay, and the Australian one, people are buying that, it's getting stronger. So is this being allowed to happen? No, this is not being allowed to happen by the carry trade, okay? So that's the point that this article is making. If we just had 
If we didn't have to carry a trade, nobody was doing the carry trade, like in 2008, not many people were doing the carry trade, then we can think about the current account having a strong effect on exchange rates. Okay? But if people are doing the carry trade, then the current account is dwarfed by the carry trade. Carry trade is bigger than current account. Okay? So this is having a bigger effect in the normal time than the current account. Okay? So do you have any questions about this article? If you don't understand well about the carry trade, then you need to study about that after class. Okay? Look it up in your own language on, on the internet. Okay? Uh, we should understand. A little bit easier to understand is the, how the current account should affect, in theory, the exchange rate. Okay, then let's take a break for 10 minutes.